Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Indeed, all praises for Allah. We praise Him, seek His assistance, and seek His forgiveness. Uh, we seek refuge in Allah from the evil promptings of our souls and from our evil actions. Whosoever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whosoever Allah leaves to stray, none can guide aright. I testify that none have the right to be worshipped except Allah alone having no partner. And I testify that Muhammad, may Allah exalt his mention, is his slave and his messenger. Uh, Alhamdulillah, last time we have uh, started together Al-Qadr. Uh, and we, we said that we should have Iman in Qadr. And we said that Iman in Qadr comprises of four matters. The first is Allah all-knowing. The second that we should have Iman that Allah has written all things that will come to pass in the preserved tablet. And the third is that whenever takes place is from the will of Allah. And whatever Allah wills shall happen. And whatever he Jalla doesn't will shall never be. And the fourth and we and we confirm that by verses from Quran. And the fourth uh, is that we should have Iman uh, that Allah Jalla is the creator of everything and that he created all that exists in their very nature attributes and movements. And that there is no creator or Lord other than Allah Jalla Wa'ala. After that, we discussed a very important issue. Uh, that issue is Allah Jalla Wa'ala put secret of Qadr. That whatever Allah Jalla Wa'ala wills and decrees for his creation surely has much benefit and wisdom. Nothing is haphazardly. Everything Allah decreed or wills or decrees, it is surrounded by full benefit to the creation and wisdom. So whatever Allah Jalla wills of good and excellence is an indicator of his generosity and mercy. And when and whatever he wills of vengeance or retribution is also an indicator of his anger or wrath. Whatever Allah Jalla wa wills of his gentleness and nobleness is an indicator of his love and forbearance. So whatever he wills of humiliation is an indicator of his hatred and loathing. And whatever Jalla wills of diminishing to dimension diminishing from some of his creation is an indication or an indicator of his perfection, ability, and an indication of the occurrence of return back to him. All these are related to Qadr and we should have, we should be oriented by so actually Qadr has fiqh. Qadr has secret to be under our comprehension. So what is the fiqh of Qadr? The divine degree, decree of Allah Jalla wa'ala falls under two categories. When Allah Jalla wa'ala decrees something to occur for 
mankind is actually two categories. It's actually two categories. The first is which Allah Jalla carries out in this universe in general. The universe is not only for mankind. It is for all creatures. So, the fiqh of Qadr is to know that the divine decree of Allah falls under two categories. The first category concerning which Allah carries out in this universe as a whole, from creation, provision, life, death, disposition, organization, all related to universal affairs. So, why Allah Jalla wa Ala? Why Allah Jalla wa Ala? Do that concerning the whole universe. The tremendous decrees are carried out by Allah before us daily and every moment in order to realize. To realize what? To realize the perfect ability of Allah. To realize the reality of his names and attributes. To realize the gentleness of his dominion and authority. And also encompassment of all things by his knowledge. This is his universe. This is his universe. And he, Jalla wa'ala, should let us be oriented uh, as his slaves about his capability. He isn't in need to let us know that. But we are daily enough to need to know that. We are, as we are seeing nowadays, as dairy as that. We need to understand that we are so weak. We are so poor. We are so and great in need of Allah, the most capable, the most wise, and full of mercy. mercy. Allah Jalla wa ala, wa ala from his gentleness and mercy is not treated us as we are treating him or as we deserve. So the tremendous decrees are carried out by Allah Jalla wa ala before us every day and every moment in order to realize the perfection of Allah, the perfect ability of Allah Jalla wa ala to realize his names, his attributes, and the gentleness of his dominion, and how he is the only to have the full right for that, the authority and the encompassment of all things by his knowledge. And that's why Allah Jalla wa Ala said in Surah Al-Talaq, Allah الذي خلق سبع سماوات ومن الأرض مثلهن He Jalla wa Ala has created seven heavens, and of the earth, the like of them. His command descends among them, the earths and the heavens. His command descend among them. So, why this happened? In order, you may know that Allah is, is having full authority. And he, Jalla wa Ala, is competent to over all things. And that Allah, Jalla wa Ala, encompassed all things in knowledge. So we have to know two things. He's capable and he is oriented by his knowledge. He is oriented by everything. He is encompassed all things in his knowledge. 
all these things concerning the Qadr, the first category of Qadr, happened all around the universe of creation, of provision, of life, uh, death, disposition, organization, the whole universe. This is one category. And the second, the second category, the second category is what Allah carries out for man, for me and you, concerning good or bad. This occurs or is on account of our deeds. So one who has Iman and does righteous deeds, Allah will make him happy, both worldly right life and that happiness will be increased at time of death, we hope that, and it will be more and more in the grave to reach maximum of happiness in paradise, inshallah. And the proof for that is in Surah Al-Nahl, in Surah Al-Nahl 97, Allah is saying, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٍ The condition is that whoever does righteous, whether male or female, on condition he is a believer, he believes that Allah is his Lord. He believes that he is a slave. He believes that Allah Jalla wa Ala has full mercy. And he believes that he is a slave in need always of his master. While he is a believer with all its meaning, Allah said, we will surely cause him to live a good life. And not only that, Allah said also, he is going to live a good happy life. Allah Jalla means both here and there. Now I want to compare, which is not a matter of comparison. If you do a good righteous deed, Allah is rewarding. So compare yours with, with your Lord. Your Lord, when he gives a minute grace, it is included the whole world. So Allah Jalla is saying, if you do, I'll give the best of your deed and reward you for with comparison that Allah is the one who is giving. So his is unlimited. See his mercy, see his mercy. When rewarding, and surely he is going to reward those believers, he is choosing the best of what you do and reward you with. So, the second portion of Qadr, in order not to miss our way, is concerning what Allah carries on man of good and bad. It depends according or it is on account of that slave deeds. That slave deeds. If the slave is having Iman and has righteous deeds, surely Allah is going to make him happy in this world, life, worldly life, and will increase this happiness at the time of death and more it will be in the grave and to reach the maximum of happiness in the paradise may Allah help uh, uh, allow uh, uh, that, us for that and on the other hand the one who who disbelieves in Allah and he, and he is insisting on being disobedient to him Sister, I want you to imagine how dare human beings are 
No, there is. It is really very shameful. It's very shameful when we are hearing what kind even of disobedience a person is greatly ashamed of meeting his Lord with those around him, those around us. Because the disobedient is uh, disobedience, disobedient uh, slaves are present among us, around us, all over. It's not necessarily to be one of your family members, but surely you will meet. You will meet in the work. You will meet in the neighborhood. In the, you will meet in the street. You around you. The manners have been totally changed, and before. Uh, you uh, even the type of disobedience w w was quite different now the they are dairy enough to the extent that they are declaring their kufru billah they are writing on the net groups and calling them asses they are calling themselves not believers and they aren't ashamed. So actually, the one who disbelieves in Allah and is disobedient to him, surely he will be in a state of misery. He will be in a state of misery. Whatever he say or not, even if he didn't show that to you, he is in a state of misery throughout his life. And the trouble will be found and happened a time of death which is terrible. Terrible! It will be increased. This misery will be increased a time of death. And the punishment will be severe in the grave. And will undergo the utmost form of the punishment in the hellfire. Where Allah Jalla wa Ala is saying in Surah Al Ra'd 34, Lahum Adabum fil Hayati Dunya, Wala Adabul Akhirati Ashak, Wama Lahum min Min Allah Himi Waq. Allah is saying that they will be punished, and the punishment will be in that life in the life of this world and the punishment of the hereafter is more severe and which means that they will not have any protector against Allah Jalla wa Ala. Allah Jalla wa Ala carries out his decree upon the person and that decree pay based upon which the individual does of good or bad, obedience or disobedience. And the majority of people do not know the secret of these decrees. Allah is not even treating us with what we deserve. He's treating us with full mercy. Mercy before wisdom. Mercy. But it should be known that whoever does wrong, he should recompense it for it. And he should be oriented that he will never ever find besides Allah a protector, a protector or a helper. None is none will, will help him or protect him as present in Surah in Nisa 123. In reality, the solution is in the hands of the slaves. Allah Jalla wa Ala does not change the condition of people until they by themselves change, which is in themselves. Allah will never ever change me or you without we are doing our best to be changed. 
we should do our best to be changed. He is going to change us. All of us committing sins. All of us committing sins. But to commit sin and you know that you are guilty and to try to do your best to be improved or to get rid of what you are committing is quite different with one doing and careless and arrogant and knowing that this is his right and if he pray or do right to his deed, deed he is behaving as if he is giving graces to his Lord. It is great catastrophe. It's great catastrophe. It's okay. I'll not call more. Now we realize that in reality, the solution is in our hands. As Allah does not change the condition of a people until they change that which is in themselves. If they were to replace disbelief with Iman, disobedience with obedience, transgression to excellence, Allah would, Allah would surely rectify the conditions immediately. The opposite, opposite, opposite the, 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 the opposite hold, the opposite holds true. The opposite holds true as a change from good to bad, from obedience to disobedience, surely will result the punishment. The punishment on, a, on account of the sins they are committing. Because Allah Jalla wa Ala is saying, ذلك بأن الله لم يكن مغيرا نعمة أنعمها على قوم حتى يغيروا ما بأنفسهم وأن الله سميع عليم It's impossible It's impossible to commit sins without realizing that Allah is سميع عليم Because Allah would not change a favor which he had bestowed over people until they change what is within themselves. Allah Jalla wa Ala is hearing and knowing. Where are we going? Where are we, where are we going? So, in regards in regards to tribulations at times they are in a consequence of disobedience it means that if do you think allah jalla wa ala as-sami' al-basir Al-Alim, he is the hearing, the knowing, and we commit sins. Allah is not going to ask us, or is he going to leave us? أحسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا لا يفتنون. Do you think? Do you think it is not at all from his? knowledge or from his wisdom or from even his mercy do the people think that they will be left we are all saying we believe so we have to be tried and Allah is saying do you think that People think that they are going to say we believe and they are not tried and tested for their truth. This is a rule. Allah is saying surely and certainly we tried those before you in order to pick up the only true 
faithful, real believers. Allah is saying, وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ We certainly tried those before them. And Allah is, will surely make evident those who are truthful and we will surely make evident the liars. He should differentiate and distinguish those from those. So again, again and again and again, we have to realize this. Allah Jalla will never leave us before being tried and tested. All of us are saying we are true believers. Okay. You have to be tried and tested. Why? In order to pick up the only true believers. So, as Allah say, is saying, you have to be tried. Again, again. We are all saying we are believers. We are all saying we love Allah. Okay. أحسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون. In سورة العنكبوت two and three verses two and three. It's impossible to say we are believers without being tried and tested. Allah is saying وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَا يَعْلَمُنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَا يَعْلَمُنَّ الْكَذِبِينَ in order to be distinguished into believers and none, we have to be tried and tested. And Allah is saying we have certainly tried those before them. And Allah will surely make evident those who are truthful. And he will surely make evident the liars. It is true to justice and grace. So, again, we have said that Allah Jalla wa Ala concerning Qadr, He, there is two situations. The first, that which Allah carried, carries out in His universe, creation, provision, life, death, disposition, organization, other facets of universal affairs. This is one group. The other group, the other or the second situation concerning what Allah carries out for man of good and bad, that is on account of the slave's deeds. Iman and righteous deeds, Allah will make the slave happy happy in his worldly life, life and it will be increased that happiness at time of death to be more in the grave and it will reach optimum, optimum or, or maximum of happiness in paradise inshallah and also at the other times it is why Allah is making testing to differentiate, to differentiate. So it behaves according to the deed of the slave. Other time, Allah, Allah Jalla wa Ala, Allah Jalla wa Ala, on the other hand, on the other times, making his Qadr for expiation of sins. We are all, we all of us are committing sins. So Allah Jalla wa Ala should at other times let us be 
in difficulties or, 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 or suffering in order to expiate sins and to raise the rank of the slave. And Abu Huraira anhu arda, narrated that the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah exalt his mention, he said, a believer is never striking, stricken with a discomfort, just discomfort, or illness, anxiety, grief, or mental worry, or even pricking of a thorn. See how trifle? Allah will expiate his sins on account of his patience. Of his patience. Allah, Jalla wa Ala, Aisha radiallahu anha wa ardaha, ma min muslim in yushak, shawka, fama fawqaha, illa kutibat biha daraja, wa muhiyat biha khatia. It is narrated in Muslim. And Abu Huraira said, ما يصيب المسلم من نصب ولا وصب ولا هم ولا حزن ولا حزن ولا أذن ولا غم حتى الشوك يشاك إلا كفر الله بها سيء من خطايا الحديث متفق عليه So again, in order to understand this point that Allah جل وعلا concerning what happened to mankind We have to understand that this portion, this portion of fiqh, of qadr, the second portion which is concerning man, whether good or bad, this will be on account of his deeds. This is one item. According to his deed, Allah is going to treat him. If the, if, the, if the slave is having the iman and does righteous deeds, Allah will make him happy. And this happiness will be in this worldly life to be increased at time of death, to be more in the grave, to reach maximum happiness in the paradise. Man amila salihan min dhakarin aw untha wa huwa mu'minun fala nuhiyannahu hayatan tayyiba wa lanazziyannahum ajrahum bi ahsani ma kanu ya'maloon. Whoever does righteous uh, deeds, righteousness, uh, uh, whenever male or female, and he is a believer for that, Allah will surely cause him a life of good, good life. He will, he will offer him good life and he will be rewarded. Hereafter, uh, here, this life, worldly life, and in here after according to the best of what they used to do. On the other hand, if he is disbeliever, the opposite. And we realize from that that it is in reality the solution is in our hands. Allah does not change the condition of a people until they change themselves. If they were to replace disbelief with Iman, disobedience with obedience, and transgression to excellence, Allah surely, Allah surely would restify their conditions immediately. And the opposite holds true as a change from good to bad would result in punishment on account of their sins. And also, we have said that, do people think that they will say we are believers without being tested? It's impossible. It is impossible. And after that, we say, on the, at the other hands, at, at other times, testing is for expiation of sins and raising person's rank. Where Abu Huraira, narrated that 
the Prophet Muhammad may Allah exalt is mentioned, so the believer is never is stricken with a discomfort, illness, anxiety, grief, mental worry, or even a pricking of a thorn, but Allah will expiate his sins and on account of his patient. And Aisha radiallahu anha wa Allah said, uh, narrated the messenger of Allah said, may Allah exalt his mention, if a Muslim runs a thorn, it means he gets into trouble more severe than this, there is assured for him. It means a higher rank and his sins are obliterated. We will stop here to continue next time, inshallah, speaking about types of qadr. May Allah accept. Jazakum Allah khairan, barak Allah fikum. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika, shadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfirka wa atubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.